Tomorrow, the U.N.'s highest legal body, the International Court of Justice, will begin hearings in a case accusing Israel of committing genocide against Palestinian people during its bombardment of Gaza. The charge is being led by South Africa, which is accusing Israel of killing, injuring and displacing Palestinian civilians and denying them food, water and essential and other essentials in a way that is intended to bring about the destruction of a substantial part of the Palestinian national, racial and ethnic group. Allegations Israel categorically denies. Ahead of the trial, Israeli government spokesperson Elon Levy accused South Africa of advocating for the devil and in a news briefing today called South Africa's claims absurd blood libel, saying the nation's capital city, Pretoria, is giving, quote, political and legal cover to the Hamas rapist regime. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa also addressed the issue today during, an, during a eulogy for an anti-apartheid activist, saying, as a people who once tasted the bitter fruits of dispossession, discrimination, racism, and state-sponsored violence, we are clear that we will stand on the right side of history. Joining me now is Daniel Levy, president of the U.S. Middle East Project and former Israeli negotiator. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much for being here. What do you think is the significance of Israel's decision to act aggressively defend this? Um, they are they brought in a, a sort of storied lawyer who is a Holocaust survivor. They brought him here uh, to, to defend them. Uh, and you've also seen South Africa lawyer up with just sort of an A team of lawyers from around the world, including Ireland. So they're both taking this very seriously. How serious are the consequences of this hearing of these hearings? Well, it is very serious, Joy, and despite the rather flippant and, and pathetic statement that you read out there from the Israeli spokesperson, the Israelis are nervous about this. They're rattled. In fact, I think you could say that you're already seeing a little more caution in what they're saying, not necessarily in what they're doing in Gaza, but to the extent to which you may see Israel feel it has to do certain things on the humanitarian front. I think it's because this is consequential and South Africa has probably done more already to shift what is going on in Gaza than three months of, of hand-wringing and meaningless rhetoric backed up by zero action from the US administration, including the latest visit by Blinken. South Africa actually said to the Israelis and sent a note to the Israelis saying this is our concern. The Israelis did not respond. There were efforts in the UN. There were efforts at the International Criminal Court. So now this has been the way to take this forward. There's significant international support. Key countries in Latin America came out in support today, including um, Brazil. And Israel, for the first time, I think, is having to seriously defend itself. And I would urge people, uh, if they have the time to read this South African application to the International Court of Justice, yeah. because the court will be asked to adjudicate on these matters. Okay, well, do the statements that we've heard coming out of some Israeli officials, um, including Netanyahu talking about the Amalek uh, or saying that they want to make Gaza uninhabitable or saying they want to do mass expulsion and drive Palestinians out and make it unlivable, those kind of statements, do those end up playing into these hearings? Well, absolutely, because this isn't just about whether um, genocide is happening. There's a question here of intent and there's a question here of risk. And part of the case being put forward by South Africa is these genocidal statements from the top tier of Israeli leadership, you know, Normally, one tries to hide these crimes, but in this case, you don't need to be an investigator. You just need to go on TikTok to hear just how horrendous dripping with racism and with genocidal, at least, ambition what Israel has said. But then you also look at the material conditions on the ground, that level of destruction, of death, of devastation, the risk of starvation, the spread of disease, 85% of the population displaced, the destruction of religious buildings, courts, administrative buildings, the, the Israeli immediate decision to prevent access of food, fuel, medicine, etc. When you take all that together, the court will then have to decide, does it call on Israel to stop? Does it say it's all okay? Does it say you have to have a very serious course correction? The court could also say that it's important to maintain evidence 
the one thing Israel has done is it's prevented investigators from going into Gaza. It's often prevented journalists. It's sometimes targeted journalists. So these are all things the court could look at, including whether those who have incited to genocide themselves need to be held accountable. Of course, whatever the court says will not self-implement. It's going to be up to Israel to decide how to respond, but other states to decide how they respond. Will America say, you know what, we don't give a damn what the court says? Or will the Biden administration say, we have to take this seriously? Does this shift, for instance, the willingness to provide arms to Israel to continue to conduct this action? It is uh, important, uh, very important questions that you're asking there, Daniel Levy. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much.